Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot. Today we're taking a look at a fantastic airliner for Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is the Just Flight BAE 146 Professional. You may have already seen this on the channel, I have used it already in the past. It came out a little, a little while ago but it's just about to get its version 2 update and there's a lot of exciting things that I want to show you in this aircraft and also I think it's worth revisiting. This is a really detailed, one of the most detailed airliners available in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment and it's also an absolutely fascinating airplane. It's a really interesting design. There's not much else out there like it. It can fly very specific routes, but also can do sort of the longer stuff as well. So it's very flexible and it's a good bit of fun. And it's a pretty iconic airplane in lots of ways. So today we're going to take it for a flight uh, from here in Belfast. Uh, and we're just going to hop over the water to Glasgow. This is the BAE 146 300 variant. There is, of course, the 200 and 100 variants included, as well as military versions and cargo versions, all in the same package, which I think is quite uh, impressive. And today we're going to have a look at some of those updates that they've added in, as well as just refresh ourselves on this aircraft and what's so special about it and why it's something that you really should, don't want to miss out on if you are into your vintage airliner flying. They've also, as a crucial update to this one, added in the uh, UNS uh, or Universal FMS system. Now this is a system I'm familiar with. I'm a real world airline pilot and I've used that system on the Dash 8 Q400 aircraft which I did fly in the real world. Uh, I currently fly the 787 previously the A320 if you're new to the channel. Um, but yeah so hopefully I'll be able to <laughs> muddle my way through the uh, the update which now includes that system uh, because previously this aircraft had the working title FMS which is fantastic a very modern system but it's not quite accurate to what this airplane would have had in the real world. So it's really great to have that new FMC included in this uh, in this aircraft now so you can finally get the, the full 146 experience. Right let's jump in and get it powered up and have a look at some of those changes. As you can see the exterior model is fantastic it always has been uh, it was right from this moment this was released uh, there's a couple more liveries included now i'm going to use this british airways livery but there are uh, a couple more including the battleship gray united express but as you can see as you get closer and closer the detail is there the texturing's there it's it's a really nice exterior model they've improved the animation on some of these exterior doors and some of the details in the cabin so we will look at that and as you move around things like the landing gear and even the engine fans look at that intake it just looks super really nice landing gear is a big part of this airplane it has very nice landing gear it's called trailing link so you can see the hinge is actually forward of the gear so when it compresses it doesn't compress in quite the same way as uh, as most modern airliner landing gear does and this gives it a really nice smooth uh, landing it's very forgiving pilots love landing this this airplane i've flown with many pilots who have flown the 146 uh, and they all absolutely love it because they say the landings are just a, a real treat but as you look around you can see a bit of grime a bit of wear as you'd expect on an airplane of this age or actually any airplane you know a month after an airplane's in service it starts to look uh, a bit grimy they just get a lot of use but it looks gorgeous from any angle i really really like it we're of course in the 300 like i said which is uh, the biggest variant which is usually the most popular um, but i'm not actually sure for the 146 what pilots preferred um, but that's the one that most simmers will like i'm sure everyone likes a slightly bigger version of these airplanes don't they here we are on the flight deck then and it's already a fantastic flight deck there wasn't much that needed changing here and indeed visually not too much has changed but they have changed a, a lot of the the underneath systems such as the handling and we've got this new universal fms like i mentioned so let's firstly go over to the efb and we can see of course we can bring our ofp in so i just select my username it's got a flight there from belfast over to glasgow uh, and that brings in all the information the weather uh, and our flight plan we want about 4.5 tons of fuel so if you press home and then go to aircraft you can just import those numbers over into here and it'll bring the cargo and passenger number in now you can see here I can press this button and now they've added a boarding sequence which is quite nice. Lots and lots of little improvements to the, the way that you sort of use this airplane to make it a little more of a, a user experience. So um, of course we can set five minutes, we can have it at instant or realistic so and you can make it longer as well. Um, so uh, instant is probably what I would use for a video but if you were setting up the airplane properly you might do it uh, a bit more realistically. Or you can just select your time five minutes for example now once you do start that you'll hear some boarding noises which is pretty cool you'll hear the passengers boarding but let me um, make sure the doors are open first of all um, and make sure we have some ground power available get the stairs open so before we do start boarding let's get some power established to the airplane and this brings you to my next uh, thing i want to show you in this update which is that now you have paper checklists this is much more likely how the airplane would have been set up uh, flying around um, you can actually rotate it around if you want it to as well um, and flick through the different pages but yeah it's it's a let's see if i can rotate it back there we go um 
it would have been paper checklists on an airplane like this. There's no electronic checklist or anything like that, like you have on modern airliners. But yeah, nice to have this feature. It's it's still got the really important uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator checklist where you can highlight each item. Remember, you can look over and bring it up there. So that's really good. But uh, once you know the airplane, this is the more accurate way I would say of using it. So yeah, I really like it. Long checklist on an airplane like this, but they certainly were. There's a lot of a lot of different systems and powers and buttons and so on that we don't have in modern airliners now. They've moved on from that. So we can't board until we've got some electrical power or some sort of power on the airplane, ideally. So let's run through this, starting with flight deck safety, check log checked, library checked, emergency equipment checked and secure, gear lever is down. You can see here it starts to match that other checklist. Radar off, so that is off over there. Uh, and the transponder is in standby. Transponder is down here. It's in standby. Then we've got the air brake in. Big manual air brake here. Not automatic, but just make sure that lever's fully forwards. Uh, flaps selection noted, so they are up, and that matches the dial. So that's what we expect to see later once it's powered up. Circuit breaker set. Nav lights as required. Now they're hidden up here. I have flown this airplane on the channel more than a few times, so uh, I'm not very good at it uh, at remembering where all the buttons are. But I know there are a few gotchas. Let's put the logo on as well. Um, so there we go. So nav lights are now on, and then we can turn on the batteries. The airplane will come to life. There we go. I love that ding. <laughs> Sounds like your, uh, your lunch is ready. Powering up then. Good stuff. Let's move along. Standby gear indicator. I haven't managed to find that one. So that is uh, saying press and check for three greens. I'm not sure where it's hidden. I feel like it would be on the overhead panel, and I'm sure in the comments you'll immediately be able to correct me about exactly where that uh, that is. I feel like it should be really obvious maybe further back it's usually on the overhead panel i'm convinced about that because the dash 8 q400 i flew also had a standby gear indicator modern icas based aircraft so with electronic displays don't tend to have these standby instruments but the gear being down and locked is really important so if your bulb breaks this is our normal indicator here you see landing gear nose gear right gear they down and green if those bulb breaks it's, it's caused big accidents before where people are obsessed with trying to figure out whether it's broken or not uh, or whether your gear is down you need to know so there will usually be a standby indicator on this style of airplane but on an electronic screen style they, they, you don't need that they have their own systems and second systems and backups and so on but they just have one display because they just put it on the screen wherever it can fit right uh brakes yellow and park so an example of how detailed this airplane is this is the brake it's on the yellow system there is also the green system um, and it is set so you can choose which system you want to have it set to so we obviously want yellow that's the normal one and then you've even got the emergency yellow system there should you need it hopefully not needed today master switches on these are on the overhead panel so we're going to turn on uh, a whole load of switches now we've got the yaw damper masters the autopilot master and the avionics master switches so those all can go on Again, something modern aircraft you just don't need to do. Ground ignition can stay in both, which is what it's set to by default. And then we've got anti-skid and lift spoilers on and checked. So ground ignition, which is just which system we're going to use to start the engines on both. And then we're going to have the lift spoilers and the auto spoiler on. Although actually it says in op on this one, so I'm not sure that's going to work. I think it's not modeled or not fitted to this aircraft. So we have to deploy the spoilers ourselves. The, uh, sorry, the air brake ourselves. Uh, and then into the lift spoiler position. Good, moving along, we've got the bus ties to auto. Those are on the electrical panel. Bus ties, both go forward to auto. Bus ties are what you can connect generators and so on, so they all supply the system at once. But if you separate the system, you just supply the generator to each side. It's useful if you've got a failure of some part of the electronic system to be able to separate it should you need to, because then you might be able to save the other half. Again, all automatic on modern airplanes. Standby inverter arm and checked, standby generator arm. So these are the backup systems if the normal electrical supply fails from the engine uh, driven generators. So those are now both armed and checked and armed. Gens 1 and 4 off reset. So here's the normal generation that we'll use. Gen 1 on engine 1 is off. Gen 4 is also off. Good stuff. APU gen on. So when we start the APU, we're going to use that power. So I'll just put the APU generator into the on position. And then we can uh, do the engine fire handles so i'm not going to do anything because i don't want to mess them up but yeah you fire handles are here they do turn and when previously recording this video i accidentally deployed an extinguisher into the engine and that breaks the engine you don't want that i'm not going to fiddle with them <laughs> but here's the instructions as well as how to use them but these are um, still used today on modern aircraft you'll find exactly the same sort of handle uh, in different places 787 even has them it's just a normal system Right, external AC power, if required, checked and on. So we do have external AC power. We can see it's available here with this little green light. I did set it on in the EFB. Uh, it's there, ground power. So let's turn it on. 
Now, to do that, external power is in the off position. On. And now the airplane has a lot of power, uh, which is what we want. APU, if required, start. Now, let's see if I can remember how to do this. The batteries are on. The APU panel is over here. I think it's really simple. I think I literally just press start. We get the APU low fuel and then the APU low oil pressure whilst it's starting. RPM goes up. EGT rises. It's very quick to start. APU's back here. You actually see the hot air venting. Again, this airplane's always been fantastically detailed. I love that there's a bit of um, loss of pressure to the speed brake, so it's slightly open. As we get hydraulic power, that should all close up. And yeah, you can see the exhaust venting out there, APU exhaust there, with this little metal panel for the heat. Awesome. APU power available. APU fuel low pressure. Now it's saying fuel low pressure because you need to turn on the left outer pump, I think. Oh, or is it the left inner? It's the left inner. <laughs> there we go. Fuel pump. So it does survive, but it actually wants that fuel pump on. So we've done the APU start. Gear indicator, we've got three greens over there. Do, do, do. Uh, master warning system tested and norm. GNS is fitted on. Overhead light changes tested and norm. Cabin emergency lights arm. So the emergency lights are up here. And we can put those two. Oh, here you go. Here's all the ground tests. Ah, so is this where the standby gear? Not sure. Uh, anyway, we'll uh, arm the emergency lights. They're in the middle position. And I'm going to put the no smoking on now. Good stuff. Uh, master warning system, by the way, you can test that over here. Make sure it's all working, which it is. Good stuff. Oh, that's it. It's cabin emergency lights. Ground test. Then you test the smoke, stall loop, speed. So that's where you just go up here and you test those systems as required. All modelled. Really, really great. Even vibrates. Look at that. That's the stall warner shaking the stick. Very good. Yeah. Again, super detailed, this airplane. Um, but yeah, I will actually turn on some lights for us. Let's try and get some a bit brighter in here. Do, do, do. Wipers, seatbelts, landing lights. No. Let's, oh, they're down here, aren't they? Here we go. Panel instruments, panel floods. Just make it better for the video. I like to have these lights on. And there you go, we can light up the checklist with this little sill light. And watch this, you can actually move it. Have you seen that before? I absolutely love that. Brilliant. Just brilliant. So let's put it... Where was it? I had it in this perfect spot. There we go. Lighting up our checklist. Isn't that great? Uh, oh, I've gone through a page. Let's go previous. So you can, you can click on the left and right to swap between the pages. So yeah, pretty handy. Done the ground tests. Ground pressurization light out. And air conditioning as required. So yeah, we can have a bit of air now so on the overhead panel APU is running and it's available so I'm going to get rid of the external power because the APU generator is on so let's get off and now the APU gen takes over let's get some air going so over here let's get this right let's get this right where's the APU air on then engine air is all off cabin air is on fresh and uh, we've got packs on. You can hear them starting to scream and they'll provide some air for the cabin. Excellent. Put the fans on, I suppose. Imagine we want those on. Usually those come on later, but there we go. Air conditioning as required. So we've set that. Hydraulic contents if fitted, checked. So there's a hydraulic pressure, parking brake pressure on the yellow system and then the green system is off because we're using the yellow system as we discussed earlier. Hydraulic quantity. I do know where that is. I'm sure it's fuel. Hydraulic quantity. There we go. So looking good, they're both in towards the full side, the F side, uh, two hydraulic systems. That's all you get on this airplane. Some interesting things about the flight controls on this airplane we'll talk about once we're underway. And uh, and now you can do the DC pump, AC pump and PTU on and checks. So on the overhead panel, you can see the hydraulic system. We have the AC pump and we have AC power. So if I put the AC pump on and look here, we've got the yellow system pressure and quantity and the green system pressure and quantity. The yellow system has no pressure. If I turn on the AC pump, the yellow system that forces the hydraulic pump to run that forces the yellow system to pressurize and our little door at the back is still sitting open so that's sitting with pressure now if i now turn on the power transfer unit it will provide pressure to the green system on 
and that closes up that rear tailgate. You see how it, the rear air brake is now closed and we can actually control it with our speed brake lever again. So yeah, pretty good. So I'm going to put the AC pump to auto and I'll leave the PTU off. I don't think we need the PTU on right now. I'm not even sure we need the green system running right now. Oh, it's just testing my ability to know what this airplane needed. What do they say? They say AC pump and PTU on and checked. Thrust levers. There you go. AC pump and PTU on. So we'll just turn them on, I suppose. So we're getting all the pressure to all the hydraulic systems until we have the engine pumps running when the airplane starts up. Thrust levers, config checked and off. So that means we need them back here in the fuel off position, which they are. You've got a little catch to press here when you want to move them over to on. So that's how you provide fuel. A bit like the master switch on an A320. And manual and electric trims checked. So you check that your trimmers are running. So here we go, my trimmer runs. I'll put it in the green band for takeoff. I can see that by the way over here and I'm just using a trim nose down switch command on the uh, the joystick. And you've got your rudder trim here, which you can run left and right pretty quickly if you need to and you've got the aileron trim over there which should be used a little less often than the others you would hope even the rudder trim on a jet airplane like this you wouldn't use much good 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 ac pump and ptu can now go off and then continuous ignition off so that makes more sense ac pump off ptu off and continuous ignition doo, doo, doo. which is down here are in the off position this is this is all the engine starting panel over there so continuous ignition we don't need for the engine startup like i say so many things to check on this engine anti-ice is off so engine anti-ice goes on for engine start unusually on this airplane so i'll put the engine anti-ice on it helps drawing the air through the engine to uh, increase stability it's something you would do on certain checklists but it's very rare but yeah engine anti-ice on heaters off wingtail ice protection off engine air off so engine air over here is off and then the wings and tail ice protection we want the ice protection off only the engine one goes on so these are the ice protection panels and they're all off let's get the as many lights on as possible just keep lighting up everything <laughs> good uh engine off flight deck emergency lights checked arm glare shield checked flight stage is not just tested flight instruments checked center panel checked <laughs> Con uh, control disconnect handles in so these are the control disconnect handles down here they're in you just check everything else is sensible and in the normal position which it is indeed uh, we don't need any of that running right now uh, your dampers both in so your damper is down here and i can turn that on your damper one and two both go on good you'll need those for the autopilot to work properly autopilot checked and off the autopilot master switch is here so that is off it's disconnected right now freight smoke checked avionics checked flight data recorder test auction main valve on and auction mask checked right that's over here oh we can turn on some more lights love the lights excellent 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 uh yeah the oxygen mask test so we can turn on and that provides pressure to our main supply of oxygen and our passenger supply of oxygen good and you can also test your masks here it's very good they've done a very good job with this uh, flight data recorder is over here and you can set the date and so on for it luckily something we don't have to do these days great so next will be the before start checklist so let's get those passengers boarding the airplane's sort of a little bit more serviceable than it was when we arrived um oh, we haven't got stairs at the back that's no good is it how are the passengers gonna get on there I don't, I don't think we have the right ground equipment but there we go so let us start boarding we'll give them five minutes to board and now it'll start loading on gonna get our 4.5 tons of fuel as well and you see the cg changing good stuff next is the before start check the safety exterior checks uh which would be the walk around by one of the pilots briefing complete brakes yellow and park they are indeed and we're going to check the temperature brake temperature is done on this little panel here you can simply turn it on and it shows us the highest brake temperature 15 degrees c you can also choose which brake you want to check they all say 15 because that's the temperature outside the ambient temperature so that's all good so you leave it in the max position it will show you the worst brake so you have an idea of what's going on thrust levers full and free movement so i'm going to just check leave those there for now <laughs> um, because uh, i don't want to well i'll show you how to do it so you click this button here this latch And then it pops up into the usable range like that. So you can do that. You hear the config warning. And then you click it again and it puts it back into fuel off, which is where we want it before engine start. Hydraulics all off. So 
this is our hydraulics up here the engine pumps are off the dc pump is off the ac pump is off and the ptu is off so that's good news so we don't want any hydraulics to spring to life while we start the engines because some of them might automatically do that and mess up our nose wheel steering fuel panel checked set so we're waiting for the fuel to finally load up what have we got we've got 2.2 2.2 empty center tank so we've got 4.4 tons of fuel which is actually correct we've got the right amount of fuel so i'm happy with that uh, and then i've gone i've skipped ahead fuel panel so that's the fuel quantity fuel panel is up here um so i'm going to turn on the fuel pumps standby pump command shut off shut common feed sorry shut standby pump on norm left standby pump on norm we'll keep the center tank transfer and cross feed shut so i'm just turning on the normal pumps there we go i think that's right for that stage next pressurization set so uh, what are we cruising at let's go back to our tablet and check our ofp cruising level 170 right pressurization up here so that's the rate i'm not going to fiddle with that i want it in auto effectively i always struggle with this panel flight altitude we're only going to 17,000 feet so i'm hoping 1013 on the barrow <laughs> i really don't know what i'm doing with this I think this means 20,000 feet. So we're going to 15, 16, 17,000 feet. So a cabin altitude of just 1,500 feet? That sounds very low. We shall see. But I think that'd be about right. At 350, you'd have 6,000 feet. Which is probably about right. That's about the maximum where this would go to. So yeah, let's see if that works. I'm sure that doesn't sound right, but we'll see. <laughs> we aren't going very high. Um, good. So I detect on oh yeah ice detect we do want on so that's over here so we turn that on and then close the guard we don't want it to turn off accidentally that would just give us a warning if we do have ice detected lights and notices set air conditioning checked and set we've done that fasten seat belts on for those passengers boarding fuel checked flight edge recorder set flight id set which you can do down in the transponder so you can go to flight id clear through those now i made a mess of it keep pressing it sorry not holding it so it's a bit like an old phone a t9 keyboard there you go not too bad actually oh messed that one up it can be 22 two delta there we go <laughs> and then we go back to our transponder code which you get from your air traffic controller good i was able to set and cross check so i'm actually now I had nice weather just to show you the exterior and to show the airplane. By the way, GSX compatible now. So if you want to um, have a nice view of your passengers boarding, you can do that. But what I'm going to do is set the weather to real time. And you'll see it's actually a horrible, horrible day. And the passengers will be very upset about having to board this airplane like this. But uh, I'm afraid that's all they're going to get. So here we go. Absolutely miserable day considering it's, uh, it is daylight out there. <laughs> it's just horrible, horrible weather. Um, so now the passengers are on. Oh, let's finish this checklist. Oh, sorry. So altimeters. So let's just set the Q&H. Very low pressure. 969 millibars today. Uh, and no master warning system. Ground up. Reset. So I'm going to do pull for ground up. Push to test. There we go. Push it in. I think that's what it means. Um, so you have a ground operation mode where you, it wouldn't give you as many warnings. Uh, and then chips papers complete. And then you set your speeds and your power setting. So Next, we're going to set up the FMS, but let's have a look inside the cabin and just see what they've changed. So they've increased the detail of the interior model in here. So you've got nice lighting, nice windows, and obviously you can see out to those lovely four engines, or you can if I set the right angle. Uh, you see the seatbelt signs are working as well. But here's what's quite fun about this. You've got uh, working interactive uh, parts of the cabin. So you can have coffee. So you power on the bed maker and set it to brew. Ah, no, it's not working. See that there's no light? That's because I have not powered the galley. I need to go to the electronic panel and turn on the galley power. There we go. Oop. And now on and brew. And just like say that this will actually drain the potable water, which is our drinking water up here, uh, if you do this. You can hear the noises as well. Brilliant. <laughs> so uh, we'll turn that off for takeoff, but there you go. Uh, you can also, uh, if it is on, if I take the coffee maker, you can pull the circuit breaker for it. These circuit breakers are used by cabin crew in case they have an issue with um, something burning or, or smoking. They need access to quickly turn them off. So those are up there. 
You can adjust the lighting in the cabin as well, which is pretty cool. So we can have all of this on. So front and rear entry, center cabin. Um, so let's have a look, just compare. So there's the fully lit cabin, as it would be. And then you can turn off side lights, all sorts of different bits as you see fit. Pretty cool, I think. I, uh, I haven't seen many airplanes with a system like that where you can control it so directly. So it's all lit right now. So let's turn off the toilet lights. Let's leave the cabin lights on, turn off the center, and we can turn off the entry lights. So how does that look? Nice, a bit more atmospheric, although a little bit gloomy perhaps. Um, it shows you the ground pat, uh, no smoking fast and seatbelt lights are on. So yeah, pretty good. Toilet water heaters as well, which you'd use for keeping those sinks warm. And also the water could freeze, obviously, otherwise. Ground service bar. Again, something you see on the Airbus, actually, if you just want to have some power to service the airplane, but you don't want it powered up in the front. You don't want to leave the avionics and systems running. You can also make calls to the cabin, which is quite nice. And finally, if I turn up the sound, you might be able to hear we can supply music for boarding. <laughs> Brilliant. Love that. And even the emergency lighting turns on so you can see the emergency exit lines light up when you do that. Absolutely brilliant. And by the way, these sounds are running, and if we go back into the flight deck, you can still hear them, of course. If I close this door, they go super muffled and quiet. How brilliant is that? Again, this details about using this airplane, they, they're really thinking about it, you can see that. Oh, look, there's a dome light. Yeah, really nice. I'm going to turn the music off now because I don't need it for much longer. You can actually put your own tracks into there if you fancy it. <laughs> Or you can let the camera crew decide the, uh, the music. So we are getting there. But now let's have a look at the Universal FMC. Now this FMC or FMS is, is correct for this type of airplane. It's something that I've used on the Dash 8Q400 in real life. And I'm not uh, the biggest fan of it as a system. But I really like we have it here in the 146. Because I think it's, it's more appropriate. If you want to go for the modern system. Uh, if say you're just more comfortable with it. Or you're flying on that system, And you want to know that you can get it done quickly. If you go to aircraft. You can actually go to settings and then FMS to modern and you'll just get the working title sort of Microsoft Flight Simulator default one but we're going to go back to the classic they have a full manual available for this as well now let's see how far I can get because it's uh, yeah it's been a long time so you press the power dim button you get power and there you go it runs through its own little tests and you can update the database using um, Navigraph if that's what you have they always have backup databases in case one is corrupt and fails or something like that in flight so look at this, they've done a, a lot of work on this. You can see that already, can't you? This is our position page, init page. So we're gonna use a GPS. Uh, now the database expired. I haven't updated it myself yet. Um, so yeah, there we go. Uh, let's start, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, I'm gonna, and I have used this on stream actually on the Q400. I'm gonna start with the um, flight plan page, I think. And we are in Echo Golf Alpha Charlie. And then you have to press enter belfast city airport accept then you can type in your route now this is it's a really uh strange way of doing it it's quite unique let's go to our chart and let's just go to our route uh there we go so we're taking off from my 2 2 then we're going to mcgee lacquer and then that's a black arrival into glasgow so what i can do is i can put uh, lacquer sorry no McGee we're going to McGee I've already forgotten the point McGee type it in now how do I clear that out back McGee enter there it is north 54 makes sense west 5 accept and then lacquer and then we're going to land in Glasgow Echo Golf Papa Fox Oh. Enter. Accept. Right. Now, select your departure and then press not info or anything like that. Press menu. Depart. And I want runway 22. You can't type in runway 22. You type in number 2 to say you're selecting runway 22. It's just mad that that's what it is. And there's no SIDS for that. So it's just a straight out departure. So that's absolutely fine. Now on my flight plan, the next point will be McGee. So we'll just head to that when we get into the air. Then to Blacker and then Glasgow. So if I press um, next to Glasgow, menu, arrive. We're landing at runway 23 in Glasgow. 
Sorry, runway zero five. So I want runway number one. Enter. Uh, and then we're doing the black out one golf arrival. So star number three. Enter. Approach RLS for zero five. Number two. Enter. <laughs> uh, and the transition will go via. Um, uh, let's do the. Let's just do the center zero five. Number five. Enter. Right. So there we go. So now if we go to flight plan, you'll see. No departure out of here, but then McGee, Blacker, and then it has the arrival, Gerber, TRN. And now, of course, I can check these charts on here, because they do have Navigraph chart integration. Uh, and if I go to... Uh, there's no particular charts I'm worried about for departing from Belfast. But if I go to arrival, Glasgow, Blacker on Golf, approach, RS05. And then you've got save charts. You can see them here. So it is Blacker, Gerber, TRN, and then Lanark. And then I want from Lanark to the Centerfix 05, and then the RS05. Uh, so that's what it's got. Now, there's no actual way to display this, of course, because we have a normal old HSI over here. But there we go. Uh, and then you can go to your next page. There, next page, and see Lanark, Centerfix 05, Final Fix 05, Runway 05. So that's him. Now, that's not good enough. We also have to go to the fuel page and enter in the numbers. So, ah, oh, it's in pounds. That's annoying. But there we got our 72. I think that's all actually loaded in on its own. Fuel on board, 9701 pounds of fuel. So we've got 2.2 tons. Sorry, we've got 4.3 times. Sorry, 4.4 tons. So, yeah, about 9.7. Uh, so yeah, that looks good to me. Good. So normally you'd have to type that in, like use your fuel and so on, but it seems to have loaded it across. And then this is used once we're underway. Uh, you can also not tuning things. Done the fuel page. Done the data. We haven't got any messages. It's a very basic system. You can do a direct to on the DTO page. You've got a nav page, which is what we're going to use once we're underway, which will show us a, a direct track to go, things like that. And you have a VNAV page, which will show you how to get to the right altitude for each bit. But otherwise, it's a pretty basic system. But they've modelled it all in here. So the menu page shows us rain prediction, which is for using GPS arrivals. So you can actually do, I think you'll probably be able to do an RNAV then using this, which is pretty good. Um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm going to leave it on the nav page for now. There we go. Oh, uh, and this is the fun thing. The Dash 8 I flew didn't have two of these. We only had one. But if we turn on the second one, uh, there is a way to, or at least there should be, a way to cross fill between them. And you can look present position to waypoint as well. Load ATC route, interesting. Anyway, enough of that for now. Plenty more to get stuck in in the manuals when we fly this on stream at another date. For our departure, I'm just going to imagine we're cleared to climb up to 3,000 feet. So I'm going to put 3,000 feet in this window over here just to start with. I will arm that with out arm. But to do that, I need the flight director bars on. So I'll put the flight directors on, out arm. Uh, and that brings up a little arm there. And we've got pitch and roll for takeoff but we're not going to matter because we're going to, once we're in the air, engage in proper modes such as uh, heading and LNAV. Now, now we're taking off from runway 22, so let's put the heading bug on runway 22. So just scroll that around. And when we are underway, I'm going to want to be in nav mode, but let's turn on our VOR over here and see if we want to tune anything in particular. Basically, we're taking off and heading straight for blacker and then trn so uh, we're not we're just going to do it in lateral nav for the first part but what i am going to do is put in the turnbury 117.5 bor up here so that's ready to go but again we've got the fms now we don't actually need to use the bor sort of style of navigation we're just going to go into um, lateral navigation mode up here uh, and let it fly waypoint to waypoint so i'm going to take off 3000 feet straight ahead and then turn towards mcgee do a direct to lateral navigation and then that take us from McGee, Blacker, Gerber uh, and we're going to climb up to 170 pretty quickly. Now finally we need to do performance for takeoff so this is a bit of fun. Um, down here you need to, uh, you've got your charts right, 37 tons is our takeoff weight. I'm going to select takeoff mode, first of all I need to provide power, there we go, power and then takeoff and it says 91.4 temperature outside 15 degrees. Now the temperature is a bit lower and it's actually as you can see, as I adjust the temperature on here, then it changes the percentage M1 it wants to use. So I'm going to lower it down now. It doesn't want to take up 70 degrees. 
to 10 degrees. There we go. Uh, the outside air temperature is actually 9, a little bit lower than that. So 0, 8, 9. There we go. And you can see here it's got the blue up arrow. It's trying to get me to move the thrust levers forward into the takeoff range where it can then fine tune it. So there's not a full auto thrust system. What it means is it can just engage a bit of a fine tuning to set that takeoff power for me. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's what we're going to want later on. We don't want TGT uh, or sync. These are modes we're going to use later. Now, I'm not very good at using this system, but we've got a target of 80 to 120 degrees. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. So we're boarded. Everyone's on. Let's run through the starting checklist. Mobile phones off. APU gen external AC set. So we're on the APU gen. Let's get rid of the external power. Good. Ground power gone. Beacon on. That's the red light. Beacon on. Beacon on. We've got the packs and APU air off if starting from APU. So they are. So we're going to put APU packs off and the APU air off. That's because we don't want to take air pressure away from the engine start. So we we'll turn all of that off. Got a little warning for that. Uh, and then we're going to have the engine anti ice on, AC pump off. So the engine anti ice is on, the AC pump, it's loads to do, isn't it? It's off. Uh, and fuel pumps are all on start power norm so here we go we're going to put the start power to norm in the middle good then start master on start select engine start so let's put the start master switch so you call it a traffic control make sure they're happy start master on let's start engine number four and then all we have to do is go down to here to engine switch and hit start we're then going to let the engine accelerate and then we provide fuel by turning on the thrust lever for that engine so we are about to start engines on our Fantastic 146. Sitting here, ready to go on this gloomy day. Let's go. Start. And you see ignition A and B because we had both for ground ignition. Start operating. N2 is accelerating. I think it needs to get to 20%. Again, this is where you can check this checklist. You can be a little bit cheeky. And it will tell you here. Our TMS should be off for engine start as well. So we'll turn that system off. So we start with engine 4, N2 at 10%. There we go. So it's through 10%. Fuel. Now we'll see fuel flow. See the needle's gone up. And it's accelerating. It's a very quick system. You'll see in a second... Yeah, the engine is not no longer using the starter, so it's accelerating on its own. Then we'll see the EGT drop. Some nice sound effects. I've just turned up sound. Peak EGT there, or TGT it's called on here. Turbine gas temperature. And that's the engine up and running. Let's do the next engines. You don't want to mess around. You've got four engines to start. You'd have lots of time doing this. Get the N2 to 10%. Think of doing four sectors in this aeroplane. That's... 16 engine starts. <laughs> it's quite ridiculous, really. All right, there's 10%. Fuel. Fuel flow. And, of course, repeat. So, engine 2. And engine 1. Good engine is up and running, so we'll run through the after starts, and it's the usual sort of thing. So start power to norm, start select to master off, engine anti-ice as required. Now it's below 10 degrees, it's raining, so we do want the engine anti-ice. So we're going to put the start selector off, the start master switch off, uh, start power is still in norm. I'm going to leave the engine anti-ice on because it is a bit of a, a miserable day out there, and we certainly would need it today. Uh, generators can come on now, so we'll turn on the generator 1. And generator four, those are good, and I can see there they've gone into the green, so those have taken over uh, the current, taking the current for the uh, electricity system. That's good news. Brake fans auto on. Uh, I'm not too worried about those. So they're only five degrees outside. You can see they've actually cooled down from the 15 that we had earlier. Like I say, just reflecting the sort of ambient temperature as they're not being used. 
Uh, brake fans are actually up here. I'll put them into auto. Why not? Hydraulics on and checked. So we can now go to our hydraulics panel and turn the engine 2 pump, engine 3 pump, and auto for the AC pump. I think I'll leave the PTU off for now as we have the system running itself. Although we can turn it on for takeoff, I think. We should find out. Heaters on. That is down here. So screen heaters, the vane heaters. Uh, and the Peter heaters are all on, all for the wintry conditions. We certainly would need them today. We don't do much winter buying on this channel, but those would certainly need them. APU engine air as required. So let's put the APU off. We'll have the engine air. Uh, actually, it's a short runway. Let's have it off for takeoff. Um, and we can also turn off the APU. Don't need that anymore. Packs, cabinet as required, those are currently off. TMS as required, so remember we're just going to power that back on at 9 degrees for takeoff setting. Nice 2.3%. Doors and windows closed, trucks and ground equipment are removed, transponder as required, so you put that to transponder. Good, we're ready to go, so we would call up for taxi. By the way, checking our warnings, we got rid of all the oil pressure and so on, so the anti skid warning and the ice protection warning um, and the flight recorder is off, so. Let's just figure out why is the anti-ice warning. I think it's saying low pressure because, yeah, because the engines are at low RPM. So I'm going to leave them there. Uh, Anti-skid, I'm surprised about. Let's have a look. Brake fans on. Anti-skid was off. There we go. Anti-skid on. That's better. That's something we missed in the checklist. Not sure how. Uh, parking brake on. Brake fans selected on. Engine anti-ice is on. Good stuff. Oh, there you go. We've woken up now with a bit of the run of the engines. Uh, so before we go, we're going to turn on our radios. These are our normal comms radios. Also, um, so we call up ground and get our permission for taxi. And I'm going to swap over. Like I say, we're just going to head straight out on runway heading. So we've got runway 22. I'm also going to swap the navigation system. So it's currently in VOR ILS mode. So it would whatever frequency we've tuned up here is what it's going to navigate towards. Um, what I'm going to do is change it over with this tiny little switch here to HSO1 to RNAV. And now it says 13.9 miles. That is the distance to our next waypoint to McGee, which you can see is 13.4 miles away on there. So, uh, yeah, that's what it's it's doing for us. Good. Let us get the taxi lights on. I think runway exit lights. Uh, Flight emergency lights can hit to arm. Uh, we can have the wiper on, which they've improved the animation on, I believe. So let me do that if I can find the button. There we go. That's slow, is it? Wow. Pretty fast. <laughs> Best thing on the 787 is a nice intermittent feature on those. We've got the runway exit lights on. And I think that's it. We won't have the landing lights on for now. And of course, before we go, um, although it wasn't on that checklist, it is in the before takeoff checklist, we're going to set our flaps. And I'm going to set them now. Um, so to do that, look at our speeds here. They're set according to the weight of the airplane. So I want to do a flap. I'm going to do a flat 30 takeoff for a short runway, 108, 114. So we need to bug those speeds. But what I can do, if I set flaps to 30, just make sure we do that over here. Flaps 30. There's a lot of flaps. That seems to run the trimmer automatically as well, actually. Interesting. We'll see what happens with that. Um, then I can just click on the speeds. So there's our... Let's get, sit here. Um, yeah, click on the speeds for 30. Once they've travelled, I'll just let them travel actually. Big, big, big flaps to take off on this one. It's 30. And now double tap here, and the speeds and the TGTs have all adjusted for that setting. So 108, what you got, and 114. So our rotate speed of 108, V2 of 114. Right, we're ready to go. Let's taxi. Brakes released. Bit of power. And away we go. There's a little bit of them. These aren't the most powerful engines. Rain seems to have eased off. I'm just going to turn the wiper off. Pilots dislike wipers. We tend to try and avoid them as much as possible. What a beauty. Absolutely love it. They've done such a good job with this model. So we're going to taxi out to runway 22 here, being careful of that jet wash behind us.
So let's get up to the runway holding point, then we'll run through the before takeoff checklist, which isn't too long now. We've through the bulk of the work. Like I say, lots of things going on. This master caution keeps latching on with the anti-ice. Um, as I go to idle, it runs out of steam. This is something that can actually happen on the 320 as well, where you can get uh, pressurization problems, or not pressurization, but it complains about air pressure from the bleed valves because they haven't got enough pressure. So we'll get ourselves over here to the holding point. It's a little bit sporty. <laughs> there we go. Set the brakes. So we'll get rid of that warning. And let's run through the before takeoff checklist. Sorry, yeah, before takeoff brakes. Yellow and green checked and checked. So looking good. We're on the yellow. Flaps selected and checked. So we have 30 as per performance and 30 selected. That's good. Flight instruments checked. We're going on heading 220. We're in heading mode or it's pitch and roll and then we'll go into heading mode and then Arnav after that climbing to 3,000 feet with altitude arm in the window and the yaw dampers are on so that's looking pretty good not too worried otherwise um, flight director is as required trims are set and checked so we're in the green band and we've got zero and zero on the trims config checked so there's a config warning we need to press oh if I release the brake there we go config warning is happy it thinks we're ready to go Seats and harnesses locked and secure. Navigate transponder set. So let's put the transponder to TARA before we get going. Uh, and the briefing reviewed. Continuous ignition A and B as required. Cabin secure. So now we can do little PA. Cabin crew, please take your seats for takeoff. Which I really like. Ba -ba -ba. As we line up, turn on the radar. AC pump goes on. Lights and strobes on. TMS takeoff M1 or disconnect. Controls checked. Master warning Cabin system. Cabin secure. Cabin secure. Brilliant. So we'll put the AC pump. On, it did say on, didn't it? Yep, and let's get the rest of the lights on. So we have the runway lights on, and then we'll come up here and we'll turn on the uh, strobe lights, rod the high nav lights. Good stuff, right? So it's clear out on approach. Please the brakes, bit of power, and we'll get ourselves lined up and on the way. What a gloomy, gloomy day. It is very, very breezy out there. By the way, you can see some other things on here. You've got state saving, TCAS on the vertical speed indicator. We've synced the altimeters. You've got uh, the auto cabin crew, so they armed the doors for me. Rudder actually steering, so I'm just using my rudder pedals for the nose wheel steering. Loads of great little things that just make this a very easy plane to use. I love it. Flight control checks, by the way, so full left, full right up and down now you'll notice that it doesn't actually move the control the rudder is hydraulic so that does move as i move my pedals and that's important because you need full rudder authority in case of an engine failure but the ailerons you'll notice don't move just that roll spoiler does that's because all that's actually moving is this little trim tab here you see it on the aileron that moves because what it's doing is I'm commanding right roll here. So this little trim tab goes down, which would move this whole aileron up, which would move this whole wing down. <laughs> so it's it's a little bit of a strange system, but it means you can have much less control, um, as in you, you don't need pressurized controls for the aileron. We do still have the roll spoiler there though. Uh, so it's good to see that system modeled. As airflow goes over the wing, the airplane will start to react. Same for the elevator. You can see it's just sitting in the up position there naturally. But if I pull up and down, you see that trim tab move. So there you go, there's a bit of flow over it, so it's, it's allowing it to move. So as we accelerate, that, that uh, will actually stabilize level for us. Good stuff. So remember, take off, straight ahead to 3000, and then we'll turn towards McGee. Which will be actually right behind our shoulder. Because <laughs> we're turning north, you can see the arrow is pointing over in that direction. But we're going to take off of 2-2. So we'll make a right turn now. Speeds aren't set correctly over here. Let's reset them. There we go. Now, Just Flight have done some great videos explaining all the little details of what the nuances of what you need to do um, to get this airplane in the air properly using the right modes. Um, so please don't use this video <laughs> as a replacement for that. This is just me. Having a bit of fun and showing you what this airplane's all about. So let's go. I'm going to do a standing takeoff. 
I'm not sure quite what they would do, but it's a short runway, so I'm going to make sure the airplane's all set up and it'll give me a chance to talk you through what I'm doing. So we we'll stabilize the engines, spool up a bit. So you can see the N1. Get it to about 50, all looking good. So now I'm going to drive them forwards. And I'm going to drive them, and this blue arrow should go out. When that arrow goes out, as I move them forward, 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 it goes out. Now, the aeroplane has enough control authority over these. There's a little clutch in there that can now move them to the target M1. Make sure we're not moving. So they're aiming for 92.3, and you see it trickles them and matches them all to get to 92.3. Pretty good. I like it. It's a good system. Pretty fun for an aeroplane without uh, any other system in it. Good, right, let's go. Brakes released. And we'll have cool ups from the auto uh, from the co-pilot, which I do like. Strong wind here. Strong wind from the uh, from the left. So I'm gonna put a bit of left aid on in to keep that wind down. High wing aircraft like this, if you try and lift, dash eight it certainly would. There's 100 knots. V1 rotates. And now let it weathercock. Positive climb, gear up, I hold about 12 and a half degrees, so the speed does, fantastic sounds, always have been, putting those up trim required, heading straight into that weather, not sure how good the weather radar modelling is, isn't it? so we'll turn it on, see what happens, let's get to a thousand feet, beautiful. This is proper flying. This is what airline pilots have to do. We can't just fly around on the nice days into the nice airport. And I say nice airports in terms of visually. <laughs> um, and Belfast is a pretty enough airport, but on a gloomy day, it can be a little bit challenging. Right, through a thousand feet, I'm going to go into heading. Heading. And I can even engage the autopilot. Autopilot in. Uh, it's just holding a pitch mode. So what I'm going to do is go to IS mode. And you can see there's just going to hold on 30 knots, but it's turning right now towards that heading bug. What I can do is bring the heading bug round and start intercepting our course towards the key. Now it's going to capture 3000, which it's doing now, and the speed is just going to run away. Remember, there's no auto throttle in this. So I'm going to bring the speed back now, or the thrust back, and let the airplane accelerate until we can bring the flaps up. I'm going to go from 30 to 24. What I can do is select max continuous thrust and sink. Now I think you're supposed to use TGT mode. Anyway, we'll just keep accelerating and get those flaps in. No, it's not engaged the out mode very well. <laughs> See, there's 200 feet. What the pilot is in. I'm a bit surprised about that. What am I saying? Range. Let's bring those flaps up now. Two hundred knots. Make the right turn, and let's climb up to our one seven zero. There's that howl noise starting, which is very uh, typical of this airplane. Very famous for it. As the speed increases, I'm going to go to IS. I want the airplane to continue its climb, and I've armed one seven zero. So out is armed in white and the airplane should start climbing. And I'm going to go back to MCT thrust and move the thrust levers forward and let it set MCT for max continuous thrust. Now I suspect you would actually target a specific temperature. You wouldn't always climb at MCT, but that's what I'm going to use today. Make sure we get as quickly as possible. I'm going to set standards. We're going to a flight level. It's a long way to go. <laughs> Is there a quick spot for that? There it is, yep, yeah, little screw up there. <laughs> like I say, lots of quality of life things. Bring it back around. Now you'd normally be vectored by a traffic control. But what I can do is, ice detected, there we go. So let's make sure we have all our ice on. So we've got the engine ice on, and I'm gonna put the wing ice, wing tail, taking up a lot of the pressure. Now we do also need to get the air on for that. <laughs> that might be where I was going wrong with the icing systems. The engine air needs to be on for it to be able to do it. Uh, I suspect the engine Anti-ice doesn't need the engine air, but the wings certainly would. And we'll get some pressurization going. The cabin altitude is already at 1,500 feet. Blank there, ice detected. We've got that copy, thank you. 
this blue day. Right, there is absolutely loads going on here, so I'm going to bring the power back now. Just gents out the time. It's climbed a lot quicker than I expected. <laughs> um, now, I want to go direct to McGee, so I'm going to do that in the FMS to show you it's possible. So I'm going to go DTO, which we don't send. No, nope, too much power off there. You've got to be very careful with this plane. <laughs> direct to number two, McGee. Enter. There's direct McGee. There it is now, lined up, and then I press L nav, and it will fly us towards there, and then carry on along the route. Good stuff. We're through 10,000 feet. Landing lights. Ah, the taxi light was down. Now they're on. Okay, so we'll put those to the opposition, uh, and we'll turn the seatbelt signs off. They're actually daylight today. The wind and the clouds around. I'd probably leave them on for a little bit longer. Good stuff. So let it intercept that. Climb up to 170. Good stuff. Let's do the checklist finally. I'll take a checklist. Gear is up and lights out. Flaps are up. TMS as required. Engine air on. APU air off. Packs on. So what we could have done is left the APU on and allowed it to pressurise the airplane. That might have been a more sensible way of doing it than what I did, <laughs> which is turning it all off. But anyway, uh, here we are. So if I take a look at the cabin altitude, that was our setting, sorry. The actual altitude is down here. Altitude of 1,500 feet. Different pressure of 5. Looking good. Cabin altitude will just stay steady now because it probably was already much higher than that. Great. Let it gently climb up now, 1,000 feet per minute. IS mode is a good mode. Now, if I want to adjust what IS I'm climbing at, so in IS mode, it's climbing at whatever speed I set it at. So I set it at 220 knots to start its climb, which is what it's doing. Uh, and now if I take power off, it will lower the nose to try and maintain 220 knots. And if I add power, it will raise the nose to try and maintain 220 knots. If I want to adjust that to target speed of 220, I don't bother with the speed bar because that won't make much difference. What I do is I press the sync button, which you can sign in the controls. And you'll see there is a little sync light. That means I'm now flying the aeroplane. So if I lower the nose now and then release the sink at 250 knots, it will try and climb at 250 knots. And you'll see that in seconds. It's still in IS mode. So I press it now and you'll see it change for that new target speed. However, it should level off at one. 70 in just a moment. Look at that, we've made it above the path. Pretty good going. Beautiful. Part of the fun of aviation is taking off on those gloomy days and getting up here. So I'm going to trickle the power back. I want to see it level off now and out as it gets to a thousand meters to go. Just keep it under control. We don't want it to scream up too fast. There's our warning horn that we're getting close. By the way, you can now synchronize the heading bug if I double tap on the screw. The heading bug just synchronizes. Great feature. Can't stand updating heading bugs in flight sim with the movement of the camera and trying to constantly scroll it. <laughs> I'm not a fan of doing that. It's a little bit easier in the real airplane, of course, because you have the real control. So we're 16.6 .6 miles away from. Oh, wrong key. Didn't do that. Uh, from McGee, we're going to Blacken. Blacken 16.5 miles. Good stuff. Now this flight's going very quickly. We're already here, routing towards Gerva. You can see you can actually load up your airplane. So we need to descend to 150 for Gerva. So let's just see if we need to do anything in here. We've done the after takeoff, climb altimeters we've done, AC pump can go off to the approach. I'm gonna leave it on, PTU off, brake fans auto, APU stop, fast seat belts and lights. So descent checklist, PTU goes on. So we're gonna put the PTU on. Then we're going to uh, pressurization set. So I'm not actually sure what, what it wants us to do. Uh, I don't know if it means it wants us to set the uh, cabin altitude to the landing elevation now which is basically at sea level if I do that what happens down here starting its descent hmm, not sure about that one that's beyond my knowledge <laughs> of this aeroplane so apologies for that um, briefing complete landing data check bug set so what landing are we going to do it's a breezy day uh, I'm going to land flaps 30 so 121 so double click that um, and 121 is bugged that's our target speed Season harness is locked and secure. So that's the descent checklist complete. Next will be the approach checklist. 
let's get ready to descend to 150 so we put 150 in the window and remember this terrible system 150 got to out arm and then i'm just gonna go vs now it's not going to do any vs yet so i need to go to my sync not sure quite why it's wobbling around that much I'm just check i'm doing anything silly <laughs> uh, and in sync mode follow the flight directors but i'm just going to start a descent rate of about 1500 feet per minute and then disengage and now the airplane should hold about 1500 feet per minute descent uh, and out is armed at 150 good stuff remember you've got to do the thrust so we're bringing the power back we're out of icing conditions i'm going to turn off the engine anti-ice i'm going to turn off the wing and tail and so on great stuff now for our arrival we're going to fly one turn 1175 so just to show you if i flick this over let's put it into heading mode so i'm going to synchronize the heading bug and then engage heading and then if I flip this over to nav, I can actually change that course bar to point in towards the VOR, which you can see it's just in front of us. And I can even put the DME on and it will show us that. There we go, 13.9 miles to do turn break, which is what's in front of us. But remember, we're flying Arna, so we'll do that nav. Um, yeah, we are five miles from the Gerber point, which is what's down here. Now you can also set the minima um, it's a breezy day the minimum is not too much of a concern here but you can set it on here if we did a decision height of 200 so our next restriction is landing at 70 so we'll wind 70 in down 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 70 and we can of course descend in there is a vnav mode so let's have a look at the vnav in the fms something that we really didn't use much on the uh bit more power and it's doing 200 knots <laughs> Go keep on top of those uh, engines. Um, yeah, the VNAV mode is not used very often on the dash, I must say. So, Lanark at 7.0 from present position should give us a target vertical speed. If I say, let's say I want to do it at 2,000 feet per minute. So, select the target vertical speed, enter the vertical speed you want, enter. That's 4.4 degrees. So, from present position, 40 miles, is that 40 miles to Lanark? Oh, I don't remember how to use this page. Never really used it. Yeah, we're about 40 miles from Lanark, so we actually only need to do 900 feet per minute to make it there at 7-0. So what I'm going to do is wait until that number says 2,000 and then start my descent. I think the progress page would uh, do the same for us. You can see how well I uh, remember this. What am I that page. Go to next. No, nope. it's in heading. You can make it do intercepts. Yeah, they've they've got it all here. Goodness me, it's all bringing back memories. You can make it do a hold as well, obviously. But no, we'll stay on the V nav. So at the moment, what it's saying is, if I did 1100 feet per minute right now, it would get me to Lanark at 7,000. Pretty cool, right? It's a handy feature. So all you need to do is make sure that you know where you want to be at what altitude. Oh, we're in heading mode still. Let's re-engage L nav. Now, will it fly over? It will. We're still close enough. That's the thing. <laughs> so raising a bit much. In terms of lights, we're going to leave the belts on. Let's put the landing lights on. We didn't manage to get the takeoff. We'll leave the engine NTS off for now. Beautiful view down there of Glasgow. It's a breezy day on the ground. Let me just check what the weather's doing. We're landing on 05, it's currently 13010, gusting 23. So it'd be interesting to try out the handling. They have improved the handling of this aeroplane. The ground handling was very nice. They've reduced the chance of it porpoising. Now, the landing is a bit of an interesting thing in this aeroplane. Let's just keep an eye on that vertical speed, though. Currently, it's 1150, so we're in a good place. It descends very well, this aeroplane, I must say. Landing, so we're going to put the AC pump also. Landing it down, lights, flaps, ice, so it all goes off below 500 feet. Um, and those are going to be centered. I'm finding that. So what we need to do is we need to land and then we deploy the air brake ourselves. It's important we do that. Um, so actually just before we touch down, I'm going to deploy the air brake and that just helps it settle down onto the runway. It doesn't have reverse thrust. Interestingly, it doesn't need it. It's got lots of, it's got good brakes and uh, big air brake at the back and big flaps. Right, target vertical speed, 1200. Yeah, plenty of room, plenty of room. Only got 10,000 meters to lose, so it should take about 30 miles, and we're not even going very fast. 
so I'm not expecting it to be an issue today. Remember, this is not very accurate. It is not reliable for everything, but it is something, something to use. Now let's put this weather radar, 25 degree range. Oh, it's on standby mode. Let's do weather, see if it does anything, painting. Slightly down. Stabilization will have on, thank you. That's the game, I think. What can I do map? Oh, there we go, it just brings up a map. <laughs> the real radars can do a map mode where they sort of map the ground. No one ever really uses that because we have other means to these days, but still. Lovely. Uh, yeah, so finally for the RS, just check our minimums, which we're going to use yeah, 200 feet for a Cat 1 or 226 feet. Q and H. Uh, and we're going to do a straight in RS landing. I'm effectively going to take us direct to Sense Fix just to, to head straight in. Uh, and we get another approach, and it's going to be windy from the right. 3 degree RS. Configure as we come down, configuring to our flat. 30 landing with a speed of 121 which we have bugged. Might add a little bit of extra speed on final just to give us a bit of uh, a chance with the old um, uh, wind. It's going to be quite gusty and breezy and something crucial is so I'll take us from Lanark. We'll head towards Lanark which is over here somewhere and then we'll fly out to CF and then in onto the approach. Uh, I'll do that using heading mode and then we'll tune in the ILS frequency which we do now 1101 So let's just put it in. 101, do it on both sides. Course 048. Because remember, this is the radio course, Ooh. not the RNAV course that we're currently flying on, which is using this box. So they go 1850 required vertical speed now. I'll just let it go just over two. I think 2000 feet per minute in this airplane would be more than achievable. Right, 2,000 feet minute required, so this is pretty straightforward. I'm going to press vertical speed, the S, then sink, lower the nose to 2,000 feet per minute. So you have to do a bit of actual flying with this aeroplane. That's a little bit much. And then let it settle. And then release the sink and now it should stay in bs 2000 feet per minute and down we go it wants 2400 feet per minute now <laughs> and we'll trigger the power off and as the speed reduces that target vertical speed will reduce as well so if you watch that speed will now come back a little bit fast and if i deploy the air brake as we slow down the required vertical speed will reduce so we can actually fix things using the air brake quite simply on this aeroplane. It's very powerful, very powerful airbrake. There we go, that's done. So now it's back to 2,000, so I can just leave it at the 2,000 feet minute we had set, and we'll make that restriction. Pretty good, right? Right, we've got the fast seatbelts on. I can leave the APU off. Brake fans are in auto. Fuel panel's set. Cabin is worn. Oh, yes, we had our cabin PAs we haven't been using properly aircraft so next would be release the crew <laughs> and then we'll tell them seats for landing we would have of course released them a bit earlier than that in the process coming through 10,000 feet we've got the landing lights on seat belts are on let's just do that now <laughs> they would not be impressed with us with that one seats for landing we're nine miles away from our which way apparently nine miles away from Lanark needs to be that 70 which he thinks is going to make Speed is good at 250 knots, so that bit of air brake just to reduce that. So we're here. So let's imagine now air traffic control vectors us out to the RLS. So we'll go heading. And we'll go northwest a little bit. So we'll go 330 degrees. The heading bug is down here, you can see it moving. Now I'm going to swap over to nav mode. Remember, it's going to level off at 7.0, so I need to watch out for that. There's our ILS course. We're 18 miles out, 8,000 feet. We are too high. We need 24 miles straight in. So actually, let's head away from the ILS a little bit. Just while we're building some room, which we can actually see over here. So 
Speed brakes going in now as we get close to leveling off. Beautiful day down there, if a bit breezy. Leveling off now at 7 0. No, it's not going because we didn't press out arm. <laughs> there we go, out arm. And it swaps into out green mode, so it's going to level off. Hmm, we might have missed our moment there. Anyway, let's carry on down to 6,000 feet. That's the classic problem. We'll do 5,000 feet out arm. This is the crazy thing about having this arm system. It's going into pitch mode, so it's not happy. So I'll just enter VS mode. So we're in VS mode. We've armed the altitude. We're doing 250 knots. Let's just slow that down a bit. Uh, and we're going to level off at 5,000. And we'll go to Q&H feet. Now you can see how much closer we are with that huge pressure change. Huge pressure change. That's why you'd raise the transition level on days like this to make sure that couldn't happen. So now it should level off. We should get out green momentarily. Come back to about 220 knots. Out green. There it is. 5,000 feet. Great. In and out of cloud now. Let's get the engine anti-ice on. Don't want to mess around with that. So one way, one thing we could do if we wanted to keep an eye on our vertical nav is I could put director number seven, the center fix, enter, then go VNAV, center fix at two four hundred, target two thousand. Ah, oh, it's not sequence, so we need to sequence it as well. So I go uh, DTO. Seven, it should be sequenced. Mm, maybe it's because it's the wrong way. We haven't gone past it. I don't know. This is this is something that you just wouldn't bother using in the real aeroplane. Too much faffing around, uh, and it wasn't not not really what it's designed for. It's, it's a relatively basic FMS system. There you go. Speed's coming back. Five thousand feet. Now, safe in this sector uh, is five thousand feet to run the RS. But if we stay on this side of it, it actually we can come down to. Uh, 3,000 feet. So let's head downwind now. Actually, let's go 210. Just point slightly away. Because we are getting blown onto this center line. Then we can descend to 3,000 feet. 3,000 feet out arm. Um, and I'm going to do IS. And then just trickle the power off slightly. Trickle the power off. Airplane lowers the nose. Nicely, gradually descending down. You'll see it's Cat 2 only. These airplanes weren't Cat 3 capable. It would have been a manual landing. They don't have the auto land capability. It is a relatively basic autopilot system, as you can probably tell. You've also got charts you can bring down from here, which fold down like that. And in here, you can have um, different things like the takeoff noise abatement profile. So this is something I should have been using earlier, and you can rotate it around. <laughs> so set climb power, pitch to V2 plus 10, complete the air switching, you know, all things like this, 18 degrees flaps. It's good stuff. So that's something I should have been using earlier. If I'd noticed in time. Look at that. Tells you exactly all the questions I had about setting the air, which speeds, which TGTs you want. <laughs> Very cool. You can, uh, of course, insert your own PNG files and have your own documents there, as it says, which is pretty cool. Put those away. So 3,000 feet means we can intercept from 9 miles. We're currently 10 miles away from the ILS. So let's now bring the power off. Get the airplane to start its descent. Now I'm going to start turning around and intercepting the RS. Scroll, 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 scroll. All way around, 0 0.5, so about 0 0.2, 0 degree would be a normal intercept. Depends how far a beam we are. We'll see how the wind treats us here. What a beautiful machine, beautiful machine. On the intercept now, still doing 220 knots, nine miles out, 4,000 feet. So we are well above the glide slope. Vectoring was not very good there. So uh, just a little bit of repositioning. We need to get down to 3,000 feet. So I'm going to get a speed break out now. We're in IS mode. 3,000 feet is armed, doing 210 knots. Getting a little bit sporty now. The glide slope is slightly below, as you can see it here. So I'm going to arm the localizer. Or, oh, sorry, that's the glide slope. So let's arm the VOR localizer here. And then the glide slope is armed as well. So I can keep it descending at this rate. We're matching the glide slope. Just need that localizer to come live soon. 
I wonder if we're going to be close enough to do that. Might need to descend a little bit further. We'll just put 2,500 feet in the window. Air traffic control can descend you lower depending on the minimum safe altitude. So 2,500 and we'll arm it. There's a radio altimeter comes to life. Radio altimeter shows up here. I was sort of hoping we'd be blown onto that localizer, but it's not really happening for us. There it goes. Localizer's come to life. Airplane's turning onto it. We're still slightly above the glide slope. So, so I'm going to cheat. Put it into vertical speed. Sink. Lower the nose. It may have actually just done it for me there. And then just rearm the glide slope like that. Glide slope mode is active. It's in the green. So let's get rid of the sink and let the autopilot fly. It. Good stuff. Let's get the first stage of flap out. Well, the speed. Get some power on now as the speed just tries to wash off. Look at that drift as we've blown on there. <laughs> Six miles out. 2,000 feet, which makes sense. 3,000 feet. In the glide slope. Lock. Good stuff. Gear down. Speed break in, idle power, next stage of flat, 24, and remember we're doing a flat 30 landing of 121 knots. And flat's 30. So all the pilot's now out, trying to keep that speed. If you come in with extra speed, it actually gets quite sensitive. So I'm going to try and get to 121, the VRF speed, as we get close to the threshold. A bit more power, getting a bit slow there. It does get behind the curve if, it, if you're not careful. Air brake was out, that's why. Right. Uh, and you can see the Fs, the fast and slow gauge on the left of the artificial horizon. So let's just get it into trim. It keeps trying to drop its nose. So I'm going to deploy the air brake as we come over the threshold. And it's sensitive in the flare, so I don't want to over pitch. So speed's looking good. Left rudder, right aileron needed on touchdown. Getting a bit high, powering back a little bit. Deploying that big air brake. 40, 30, powering back. 20, idle. 10, left rudder. Very sensitive left rudder. Let's touch down. Right aileron needed just to stop that wing from rising. It's gone to ground idle automatically, which is quite a nice feature. And we'll get on those brakes. Not the smoothest ever landing, but you just want to get it on the ground, get it slowed Six down, knots. get that wind out from underneath those wings. And now, there we go. Now, those should have deployed. That would have helped. <laughs> That's because I deployed the air brake and didn't redeploy it on the ground. But there we go. Welcome to Glasgow. What an interesting machine. So that's all for today's video. I hope it's been interesting for you. Like I say, an interesting update to a very interesting aeroplane. Some nice new quality of life features, but basically this remains a fantastic aeroplane. It was the moment it launched, frankly. Uh, and to have that new FMS system to make it a little bit more authentic, I think is going to really work for a lot of those airliner simmers. And now you can take it onto VATSIM knowing that you're using the, the aeroplane in the fit it was sort of designed for, or certainly the fit it was flown around in at the time. Lots of fun to be had in the 146. It's super detailed. I love the way it flies. I love the way they've designed it. Uh, and I think the modeling is just fantastic as well. This was made using a preview version. So uh, things could change to the version 2 that you end up getting. But uh, yeah, I think it's, like I say, already a fantastic airplane at, at, as it was at launch. And now you can have some more fun with it. That's all then. Please do keep safe and well. More live streams and videos to come on the channel. So do please subscribe if you'd like to see those. We'll see you in one of those in the future. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.